Okay, guys, so I'm here to review UFC 148 with Captain Ashley and I Fingers. So, let's get right into it. The main event, Kill Simmons vs. Anderson Silva. Now, I watched a couple of reviews and, uh, and a lot of people in the review were saying when Anderson Silva got taken down, here we go again. That's not exactly what I got because if you look at the first fight, Anderson Silva wasn't defending Kill was raining in shot after shot. This fight, Anderson Silva used a couple butterflies. He tried to spray his base with a crucifix. Kind of with a crucifix to the leg. He was holding him close to him. To where? Kill King Egg Shock. Kill Kill was just on top of him. Like, on top of him. Sometimes smacking his ear. Sometimes being insignificant. Strike. And that's pretty much how I spent the second round. I think that that first round and the thing Silva got cut off. He was cut off guard emotionally and he was so emotional. He got he wanted to finish him right then and there and then realized that Kill was taking him down, that is my opinion. But the second round rolled around and Anderson and Kill couldn't and go in for the takedown. Anderson Kill was back here. He goes again, he back here again. Right then and there, I knew it was over because Kill Simmons, his whole game is based off wrecking, as everybody knows. He's not really that good of a striker besides the jab, so every I knew it was over. He tried to go for a spinning back first. I first saw what catching him with uh, a right eye boy. He stumbled. Then Anderson Silva went in for a nearby. And everybody knew it was over at the end. I can get proof that Anderson Silva did originally have a rib injury because if you look at the comparison of the defensive ground game between the first fight and the second fight, it was way different. Kelsen and King Egg and he strike on the ground. But my my opinion wasn't like for Angus and Silver. If Mark Munoz wins Mark Munoz, but I wouldn't put Chris why in there? Because I think he needs a little bit more 
one, at least one more season in fight before he steps in there against Anderson. My top two contender for contender for Silva and Mark Munoz. Or I would give him immediately Hector Lombard to fight if he wins. But I'm to the next fight. Keo Ortiz versus Forrest Griffin. I'm hearing a lot of people say that Keo won this fight. I don't think he did. Because while Keo Ortiz won the, I believe it was the first round, the majority of the fight was on the feet. And Forrest Griffin, while he wasn't hurting Keo, he was peppering him with leg kick and little dab, which basically controlled the fight. To where if Forrest Griffin really wanted to go in and finish him, he could because after another second round, and even I got another first, Keo had gas, even though he regained his energy first break. So my opinion is, Forrest, even though he didn't have significant strike, he was peppering him. I honestly think this wasn't a good showing for Forrest because I, I know Forrest is a grinder, but if he's gonna, if he occasionally gets it out like this with Keo, imagine what he's gonna do with some of the top level competition. I I would put him I I would put him against the winner of either Ryan Bear or Yoda. That's what I would do. Give him a cash. Even though I think he won't win. I'm to the next fight. Come in. Versus. Patrick Okay. Now I. This fight. Pretty much went. How I got it away. In terms of. The pace. But I wanted. Pa Patrick okay. Okay, he was getting pepper with leg kick to the leg and kick and kick to the head. But I had in my preview around the one and a half round mark or the second half of the second round, Cunley would slow down and he would, and there was Patrick Cocaine opportunity. He didn't take advantage of it. Well, he landed a good shot in the tank. Cunley just controlled the space with his kick. And he did come back in near the end of the fight. He, he basically, Conley basically kept 
kept the gifting. He wanted to keep the gifting with his kids, and he was effective. There's really not much, not that much more to say about this thing. Okay, what's next for Kanye? Maybe I would give him somebody like uh. Like Brian Scan or somebody like that. But next fight, um, it was G- Gaming Maya versus Dunyan Kim. So, Originally, I got gaming my striker was gonna come out, but from the opening bell, when he got those hooking, I knew I knew he had already won the fight because even though. Gangnam Kim is good on the ground. Gaming Maya is superior in him. He basically got the hook him and dragged him down. And apparently, Gangnam Kim cracked his rib. I don't know why. Game in my shop without the referee's consent. Cause Gunyan Kim, for all we know, if the injury wouldn't will, may, may have been pay, paying possum, even though the injury was real. Sometimes you gotta continue until the referee. Stops you. For gaming Maya, I would give him a fight against Kostek. If Kostek, I believe he had a fight already booked. If he won his next fight. Next, Ken Mangas versus Tony McKenzie. This fight went way completely different than I got. I got Ken Mangas was gonna kick him down. And run and pound, and say he caught a kick, and him right in the shoulder pick kick, and that not and that crumbled Cody McKenzie, and he gave baby hammer fish, fish after that. Now. This is a good win for Cam Mangas. But this doesn't improve anything to me. Really? Cause I, cause all Curry McKenzie had was a guillotine. So, what's next for the Cam Monday, I don't know, since the Federated Division is choking, I really don't know what to say. So, that's that. Mike Easton got the job done, it was a pretty boring fight, he ran it straight. 
he got mo more of a striking he got going. But there's a fight on the undercard that I want to talk about. Habib, Habib, Nigga Mayoff versus Jason Kibau. Habib really made me a fan of his this fight because he was very, he was severely overmatched with the power he was a severely overmatched yet he pushed through. I'm hearing a lot of people say Jason won this fight. I'm like, what? What are you talking about? Because if you look at the fight, he was basically an aggressor the whole fight. He was pushing Gishin up against the cage, grinding him like a bulldog, like a pit bull throughout the whole fight. Gishin didn't do really anything but a couple shots. He really didn't go try to get off the cage. He really gets good gear, basically. So I would have given the fight to Habib. He really made me a fan. I would like to see what next film. And that's it for the video, guys. Peace.